Hey guys, it's Abby. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reading you some terrifying short scary stories from the short scary story subreddit. If you guys like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you are new here, click the subscribe button down below and turn my post notifications so you never miss a video. I post every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We love spooky Sundays around here. And other than that, let's just get right on into the video. First story is by the user Forgotten Well, and it's called I Adopted a Retired Police Dog. Rocky is the sweetest little angel. At the shelter, he didn't bark even once, just smiled at me. Driving home, I texted my husband on our way home. Not sold on the name Rocky, I was thinking Sergeant Bark. Babe, what? For the name, babe, because he's a pig, get it? I entered our home ready to scold my husband for suggesting such a mean name, but he wasn't home. Where are you? I messaged him. Work. Almost done. I thought the office was closed on Sundays. Catching up on paperwork. We'll be home soon. Another reason I wanted a dog. My husband has been working all the time lately. Odd hours. Sometimes at night. I gave Rocky a tour of our home. I showed him his kennel and the toys I bought him. I could see the happiness in his eyes. When my husband got home, I excitedly brought our new dog to show him. Rocky became agitated. He barked loudly at my husband and tried to dig his paws into my husband's legs. Dogs always know when something's up. If Oscar doesn't like someone, neither do I. I restrain Rocky. He's never acted like this, I swear. Honey, I just went to the dispensary. There's weed in my pocket. Oh? He thinks he's solving a crime. This isn't gonna work. What do you mean? We can't have him barking his head off every time I want to smoke a little weed. I'll put him in the backyard. I led Rocky to the back door and let him out. Honey, I know you want a dog, but maybe not a retired police dog. How about tomorrow we bring him back to the shelter before he gets too attached and get a puppy? But he's so perfect. I won't have a dog barking at me every time I want to smoke, okay? That's final. Tomorrow we'll pick a different dog. Sounds like you need to pick a new husband. <laughs> My husband stormed up the stairs. I held back tears. I loved Rocky so much, but I couldn't cross my husband. He had a horrible temper. I called the shelter to tell them the bad news. We're gonna need to pick out another dog. We just can't have a retired drug-sniffing dog. Rocky wasn't a drug-sniffing dog. You told me he was a police dog. Rocky was a cadaver dog. I looked outside and saw Rocky digging furiously and barking. The serial killer husband? First time I read this, I did not see that one coming. I love that though. I don't even know what else to say about the story. It just, it's just, it wrapped up so perfectly. A nice little bow on top. This next one is by the user Blair Daniels and is called A Phone Call With My Husband. How are you doing? My heart melts when I hear his voice. I'm doing okay, I say. I can't help but smile. How are the kids? They miss you. I bring the phone to the playroom. Hey, Isabel, Jackson, say hi to daddy. Isabel smiles and leans into the phone. Hi, Daddy, she says. At only four, she's already such a wonderful little sweetheart. But when I bring the phone to Jackson, his face goes cold. He shakes his head furiously. No. Why not? He pauses, glaring at me. That's not my real Daddy. Jackson? It's not. It's not, he screams. He shakes his head wildly, stomping on the ground. It's not my Daddy. I pull the phone away on the verge of tears. I'm sorry, he's been acting up lately. I can't. It's okay, I understand. A laugh comes through the other line cut with a bit of static. I was like that too when I was four. Six, I corrected him. Jackson is six. A pause. I miss you so much, I tell him. I miss you too. I want to tell him more, so much more, but there isn't much time. I pull it away from my ear and stare at the screen. One minute and 17 seconds remaining. So I ask him to tell me about our first date at that Italian restaurant on the lake. It sounds exactly like the way he used to tell it to our friends. All the laughs timed at the right places. When I spilled the glass of wine on myself when we ran into the pouring rain. And then after he's done, I hear the dreaded beep. I whisper goodbye and pull the phone away from my ear. Your call with Memorial AI has ended. Pay $59.99 for five more minutes. I glance up at the mantle, the photos of us smiling, beaming, arms around each other, and in the center, a cold stone gray urn. I'm lucky that Daniel posted so much of his life online. 
I always complained about his time on Facebook and Instagram and all his vlogging attempts on YouTube. But now, now that I can hear his voice, talk to him two years after his death, I'm eternally thankful. Because without all that material, the AI wouldn't have had much to train itself on. I wiped my eyes, then I clicked the button for five more minutes. Okay, that's kind of sad, but also like, it's really creepy. There's this movie. I'm pretty sure it's a movie. The husband dies, or maybe the wife dies. I'm really not sure what I'm talking about right now. But I know there's a movie where it's like, they make like a body of the person and it's like a robot. And it's like supposed to be them after they die. And it just, as you can imagine, does not go well. So at least it's just a voice on the phone in this instance, but like, again, we don't need to be making fake people and fake robots. That can only ever end badly, so I just stick to listening to old voicemails. I'm okay with that. The next story is by the user cbenson1273. My boyfriend says he's innocent and I believe him. Just to get it out of the way, my boyfriend is in jail. No, I'm not one of those pathetic women who settles for an inmate because she can't get a real man. But when I saw John's story on television, I knew I had to reach out. We had a connection. It was strange at first, sending a letter to a man I'd never spoken to. But we started with introductions. I told him about myself and my family, and he did the same. And eventually, we developed a relationship. We even realized that we'd met once before, though we never spoke at the time. Soon I began looking forward to his letters opening each one with the excitement of a child at Christmas. In his letters, he told me his story, how he grew up in a middle-class family, went to college on a partial scholarship, studied marketing, and got a sales job that let him travel the country. Coincidentally, you may remember from a popular podcast that that's how the police caught him. The bodies of the girls were found in locations that lined up with the places he traveled to for work. That and accounts of witnesses who saw them together were enough for the jury to convict. But he swears he didn't kill those girls, and I believe him. I know how that sounds, but he's not the type of person who would hurt anyone. In his letters, he opened up to me, and I saw his beautiful soul. He told me how amazing it was that he found a kind, beautiful girl who could see through the news reports to who he really was. No one has ever called me beautiful before, but I sent a picture and he said he could see from my smile how special I was. He said that he'd prove his innocence and that when he got out, we could be together. And I know we will. It's hard being with him sometimes. My friends say the right things, but I can feel them judging me. What kind of a person would give up everything for a long distance relationship with a man who likely won't get out of prison for decades? What kind of life is that? But they don't understand. John is an amazing man. He's handsome, smart, and funny. He remembers my birthday and asks about my family. Well, <laughs> what else is he gonna do in jail? He's the kind of man women throw themselves at, and he chose me. I know in my heart that we're meant to be together, and I couldn't say that if I thought he was a murderer. So how could he have possibly killed those women? It's not like they could die twice. That's crazy that she went and killed all those women and framed him. It's like he had to be in jail to fall in love with her. Our next story is by the user Imagination, and it's called He's Coming Home. I couldn't stop smiling. My husband was coming home. After being deployed forever, he was finally coming home. He had left when I had gotten pregnant and had not even come home to see our baby. That's the way he is. Nation always comes first. Family comes later. That's the way I like it too. That's what attracted me to him. I was hoping it would be a good day for baby Zach too. That he wouldn't be cranky today. That he would be the perfect baby just for today. Just for his dad. I couldn't stop smiling because we were gonna be a family again. I was rocking baby Zach when the doorbell rang. I quickly checked myself in the mirror and made sure I looked good. I was looking a little pale, but I hoped he would not notice. My mother-in-law beat me to the door. I guess she was just as excited as I am to have him home. I peeped out a little shy and a little excited. There he was, looking just as handsome as the day we got married. We smiled at each other, so glad to be together again. My mother-in-law, meanwhile, was sobbing at the door. She had just gotten the news of her son's demise. His body would be coming home soon, to be laid to rest next to his wife and their stillborn son. Okay, I feel like that's also sad, but like really good. To me, it's so crazy. Like, I feel like it ties into 
alternate dimension. The fact that because she's dead, she goes to the front door and her husband's there because he's also dead, but the mother-in-law who's still alive just sees like the people bring the news. Our next scary story is by the user S underscore G underscore Woodhouse called My Roommate Loves Watching Horror Films at Full Volume. Jake, this is the last time I'm asking you, lower the volume for Christ's sake. I said drumming my fist on my roommate's bedroom door. Okay, okay, I'm turning it down. He shouted over the sound of a woman obviously being eviscerated with dramatic sound effects with each stab on top of the music rising to a crescendo. Things weren't always like this. When I moved into the apartment, Jake was already living with Stacy, his girlfriend at the time. They had an extra bedroom and the three of us quickly got on well. Then Stacy broke up with Jake. Overnight, she'd left the apartment and was never heard from again. Considering Jake's apathetic state, which seemed to be on the verge of collapse, I'd prefer to not stick my nose in his business and just accept the situation. Over time, his behavior deteriorated. He became increasingly short-tempered, messy, and above all, began to spend his days watching horror movies in his room at an excruciatingly high volume. His favorite movie was American Psycho. I now spent my evenings listening to the sounds of chainsaws and women screaming through the walls, and I was getting sick of it. That weekend, I had planned to go back to my parents to spend a few quiet days. When I told Jake, I felt like I just told him that Santa Claus was coming. He was probably going to spend the whole night watching horror movies, and this time it would be up to the neighbors to shut him up. Unfortunately, Friday evening, my train was canceled at the last minute. I went back to the still unlit apartment thinking I'd put on my noise canceling headphones and watch a show all evening so as not to get depressed. After finishing the last season of Gossip Girl, I took off my headphones to finally relieve my ears. Without realizing it, I spent the whole night in my room and it was past 2 a.m. That's when I heard it. The piercing scream of a woman being eviscerated and the laughter of yet another maniac. I dashed out of my room towards Jake's and raised my fist ready to punch a hole in it if necessary. Then I froze, fists in the air. One thing struck me. I could clearly hear the screaming and stabbing just beyond the door, but there was no music or any other sound coming from the room. <laughs> it was never a movie. <laughs> the fact that it's like this whole time they thought he was just watching horror movies and it was really him making his own horror movies. Crazy. I, I could tell what was coming from the first time I read it and I was afraid when they said that their train got canceled and they were coming back home, they were gonna like walk into a scene and also get killed. Although I guess, I don't really know how they'd be writing it then, but you know, it is a story, so who knows. Either way, excellent twist. All right, and the last story of today's video is by the user Blood of the Forest called New Year New Me. ID, the barman told the redhead who approached, Seriously? They got caught serving underage recently, I told the stranger after she flashed her ID. And your photo can't be as bad as mine. I whipped the driver's license out of my bag and showed her. Aw, it's fine, she told me, and showed her own. Mine's a mess. I looked it over, then returned it. Well, I'm glad you look less blurry in person. You here alone, I asked? I knew the answer, though. <laughs> That's never a good sign. I am now. My roommate is away until the third, so I came with some work friends, but then they wanted to leave for the club down the road. The red in her hair was unnatural, but really suited her. I found my hand drifting up to my equally fake blonde hair and was wondering if it would suit me too. I actually got stood up, I told my new friend. Rebecca's face filled with sympathy, and she called the bartender over to order us both shots. No, I can't, I said, after the order had been placed. I drove here. I have to be up early tomorrow to help my parents with something. Just like that, I'd established myself as reliable and helpful. Rebecca downed both shots when they came. We both talked until after midnight, and she fumbled with her phone when it was time to head home. No battery. Can I borrow yours to call an Uber? On New Year's, that'll take forever. I can just drive you back. I helped her into the back of my car, and then with fluid practice motions, I committed to my resolution. The knife left my bag and plunged into her neck. Then I shoved her into the car and closed the door. I waited for the thrashing to stop to get in the driver's seat. I grabbed Rebecca's purse and searched it thoroughly. I dipped into it before when she'd been to the toilet, turning her phone's torch on to drain the battery and searching her wallet for any membership cards to mention the same place as common ground. I decided to head to her empty home. 
Ideally, I would live her life there, but of course, whilst I'll be able to look enough like her to match the low quality ID photos, I wouldn't fool her friends and family. So Rebecca would have to text her roommate that a cousin he hadn't heard of was having some sort of emergency that she needed to leave. Then, like the other woman before her, she'll go traveling or get an unexpected transfer at work. Some people decide to begin one new thing for their resolution, but I become an entirely new person every year. It's exhilarating. My fingers brushed a lipstick in Rebecca's purse, and with a smile, I applied it in the rearview mirror. I think I'm going to like this one. That's, that's really dedication to New Year, New Me. I mean, I, I don't think you can get any more literal than that. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a little too far, I think. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, if you guys come across any stories that you want me to read in my next videos, feel free to send them to me on Instagram. My links are down below. You can also feel free to tag me in any terrifying TikToks or Glitch in the Matrix TikToks for other videos. But if you guys like this one, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you are new here, click the subscribe button down below and turn my post notifications so you never miss a video. I post every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Spooky Sundays. And again, Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of these stories and I will see you again next week. Bye.